Hi guys. Well, I'm back here in my kitchen and I'm here to talk to you today about muscles. We've been learning about different systems in the body and we can compare them to different organisms in the animal kingdom. And so today let's talk about muscles. Now we know the primary job of muscles is movement and that movement is controlled by the nervous system. Even some basic animals need to move to respond to their environment. Take, for example, the simple clam. Do you know that this guy has muscles? He actually has a set of adductor muscles holding this shell together. It's extremely strong shell. I couldn't even pry it open. So those adductor muscles are very, very strong, holding that shut, protecting his internal organs. There's actually another muscle inside his body this clam's body called the foot. And that's responsible for actually moving the entire clam. So I have a little clam model here for you before we take a look at the inside. So here's your basic clam. It doesn't look like much. And sometimes the retractable foot comes inside and outside of its body. But usually you just see the shell. But those adductor muscles, once we open those up, you can see there's a, a adductor muscle here and an adductor muscle there on each side of the uh, clam's body. And on the inside, this string, we see a lot of organs inside. They do have a heart, they have a kidney, they have digestive glands, there's their stomach, they have siphons for taking water in and out of its body. But this string represents ganglion. That's his nervous system, so he can sense his environment. And so he can shut his uh, lid there, his shell, and use the foot to bury himself in the sand. So this one I did manage to get open, and I couldn't pry open this shut one with any of my dissection tools. I actually put it in water, uh, boiling water to open it up, and I don't know if you can see it real well there, but this tough piece of material right here at the bottom is the foot. That's the foot. And then there's a really strong muscle. This is one of the larger of the adductor muscles right here that had to be broken so we can open up his shell. And then there was another little one on the other side. And the rest are just the internal organs of that clam. But then we can get to more complex organisms. And that's our objective for today. So I'm going to put my gloves on and show you here. So our objective today can actually talk about homologous structures. We brought up the term homologous structures in our evolution unit, and homologous structures show common ancestry. So we're going to look at muscles in the human arm and compare them to that of a chicken wing. Um, chicken wing is a homologous structure to the human arm, and we can relate these organisms because we're, they're inherited from a common ancestor. We share common traits. They have different functions but they have the same structure, so we can compare the two. So we know the job of muscles is to turn potential energy into mechanical energy or actual movement. So by doing these things, we need contracting and relaxing. We need muscles to contract and relax. So we can compare this uh, in the chicken wing. So I'm gonna move this down here so you can take a look at my tray. And here we have some chicken wings, the full wing here. Um, and I did already take the skin off of it. Um, so in this procedure for this lab, I've got my lab document here. Um, you can use some uh, protective gloves if you would like when handling a chicken. And a couple of the tools that I use, um, I do have a dissection probe for pointing to things and kind of loosening muscles up. I have a pair of very sharp, small scissors and I have some tweezers. Um, sometimes a scalpel is helpful, but I find that a pair of really good sharp scissors works just fine for me. So um, if we're just looking at the chicken wing, if you know anything about the bones of even your human arm, we know we have a large bone here in our upper arm area, the humerus. We have a radius and ulna in our forearm, two bones there. Then we have the carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges. And to move our skeleton, we need muscles to do that. We need muscles. We need to be able to contract and relax them so they're in pairs. For example, here's the humerus, right here, the large bone, and the upper arm. And at the top, we have the biceps. Do you guys know how many muscles are in the 
biceps make up the bicep? <laughs> if you said two, you're correct. And on the opposite end, underneath, we have the triceps. So any guess as to how many muscles make up that tricep? <laughs> you guessed it, three. That's underneath. Okay. Now we have something else to help pull here for the contraction and the rela the relaxing. Okay. Um, and it looks very shiny and white, kind of whitish or silver in color here. And this, do you have any guesses as to what that that is right there? It's something that's connecting muscle to bone. That's a tendon. A tendon connects muscles to bones. Um, so the tendon from the bicep, those two muscles, connects to the radius here in the forearm. And in the triceps, there's about three muscles underneath, there's a tendon to pull on that tendon attached to the ulna that's going to straighten the arm. So the bicep, we want to flex that. It's a flexor muscle. And when we flex a muscle like the bicep, the tricep is going to extend. So we have an opposite movement direction there. So you can actually find that tendon. Let's see, here's my bicep. And I can pull on it the tendon, and I can flex that bicep, and it will move the rest of the arm. Because up here is the shoulder joint, then we have what would be like our elbow joint, and then our wrist joint down here. So here are our biceps, there are our triceps, we can pull on that tendon to move the arm, or the wing of the bird. Right? So before I did all of this, I did remove the skin and some of that connective tissue in between. And then here in this forearm, there are a lot of smaller muscles here in the forearm. You can kind of um, separate them out too. And if you can find a tendon in there, you could do like a very similar thing where you can find a tendon and move that wrist back and forth using that muscle. Okay, that wrist back and forth. There, okay. So muscle fiber contraction is described um, using the sliding filament theory. According to this theory, myosin filaments use energy from ATP to walk along the actin filaments with their cross bridges. This pulls the actin filaments together. So we have that actin and myosin working together, which is going to cause all of your motions. They work to shrink that sarcomere and contract the muscle. Okay. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to point out here at the top, there's actually um, this white part between bones. And I see some of it right here. Do you know what that's called? That's actually cartilage. It's between the bones. It's a shiny white material here. It's kind of slippery. And that cartilage is smooth and flexible. And yeah, that allows the movement in between that joint. It's a type of connective tissue. It's a type of connective tissue there. Yep. All right, I'm going to take my gloves off. And I think that about wraps up our muscles. Don't forget to do your reading and take the quiz on the muscles. And I will see you soon. Bye, guys.